Hi guys, welcome to Sports IQ. This is Inquirers. Well, sports sort of talk show. If you're going to the World Cup, um, does that fact sunk in yet? Um, no, it has not. Um, I think it's just. Uh, I think like all my teammates have been saying on all the interviews, like it really hasn't. Like it's just kind of like surreal and like oh my gosh, like that really happened. Um, so I don't think it's sunk in yet, but. Um, It feels it feels great. It feels amazing, though. Like I'll be done so far. So to answer your question, no, not yet <laughs> for me. How about you, Queen Lee? Yeah, same. I feel like it's hard to believe. Still, like what Serena said, it's a surreal feeling, and I feel like for me, it still hasn't sunken in yet. I think the best part about everything is seeing everyone's reaction to us qualifying that's my favorite part like seeing all our supporters um being so excited for us i like that all right so um for quinley again you scored the philippines first goal against taiwan but taiwan equalized in the 82nd minute i know you were in the bench when that happened um were you gutted when that happened because just a few minutes then you're onto the world cup but they equalized I mean, yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie. We were so close, but at the same time, like, I had faith in our team that we were gonna bounce back, and that's what we did. I mean, t Chinese Taipei is a strong um, competitor, and we knew that they were gonna bring their game the entire match. And so I feel like as a team, we prepared for everything, and even if it was them equalizing the game in like the last minute. So I had faith in my team that we were gonna bring home the win, and that's what we did. How about you, Serena? You well, you're in the pitch that time. What was the team's emotion? What was the team's mentality when they equalized? And can you just describe your team's fortitude heading into the shootout? No, no, uh, like so much what Q said. It's like, uh, like, wish we could have just got it done in the first 90 minutes. I think that's what every team kind of wants. Um, no team wants to go into overtime, more running, more you know, having to work hard and stuff. You don't have to. So uh, when they scored, it was like, okay, um, that happened. Um, but as soon as it happened, it's like, all right, let's focus on getting another goal um, so we don't have to go into extra time. Um, but, you know, when that didn't happen, you know, we kind of, you know, set our minds on like, okay, we got 30 minutes no matter what, um, you know, trying to get another goal in the extra time and working our, working our butts off. And um, I don't think anyone was like, Um, to a point where, like, oh, like, I don't know if we can do it. Like, it was just like, okay, we got to work harder. Um, and so by the time, you know, the penalty kickoff start, started to roll around where it was like, okay, this is actually going to happen. I don't think anyone faltered. I think people were ready for the PKs. Um, no one backed out because, you know, sometimes there are, you know, people – that, you know, that the pressure gets to them and they say, like, no, like, I, I can't take this PK. No one that was chosen to take the PK um, said no. Everyone was like, no, I can do this. I'm capable. And um, just having the girls believe in themselves like that, everyone, I think it helps, you know, motivate everyone going into a stressful situation um, that the PKs kind of bring. So, um I think everyone just displayed so much um, just like calmness, like in a very stressful environment where a lot's on the line. Um, Serena, well, you scored probably the greatest penalty kick in Philippine history. So <laughs> what heading into the heading into the penalty box, putting the ball on the ground, what was running through your mind that time? It's just like a little bit of a backstory that I would like to tell is so versus our game versus Indonesia a couple of days before this game, um, there's PK in less than like less than five minutes of our game. Um, I stepped up to take it and unfortunately I, I missed. I missed that PK in the Indonesia game. So um, kind of had that in the back of my mind um, throughout the tournament. And then, you know, when finally PKs came for Chinese Taipei, And coach told me, hey, you're going to be the sixth person to take this PK. Are you going to do it? I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll take it. And, you know, other people, you know, maybe having, being in my shoes, 
I missed the PK. Maybe they might have said no, but, you know, that's in the past and I have to forget about that. So um, leading up to the PK, you know, obviously we had those two misses, um, but I think everything happens for a reason and we kind of had to have those happen because when, when Haley, Haley Long had missed hers, she just, she came to me and she said, hey, you need to pick a spot and you need to like just commit to it. You need to commit to it because I didn't do that. And so with me missing my PK and with Haley kind of giving me that added information, when I was walking up, I already knew where I was going to go. Um, I wasn't, I really wasn't thinking about the pressure and all the things leading up to it. And if I made the goal, this is what's going to happen. And if I don't make the goal, it was really like, I was me, I had like those horse blinders on and like me, the ball and the goal. So when I finally walked up, I just, I really wasn't thinking of anything besides scoring. So, um, yeah. And then the rest is history. <laughs> um, how about you, Queen Lee? What was, what was the feeling like knowing you, your teammates can bring, can make history in that few minutes on the pitch? Uh, I remember like standing on the sideline, like watching the PKs and all of us are just like having each other's arms around our back. And like with every PK, we were just like, I don't know, we were praying, we were cheering. It was just such a mixed emotions. And like Serena was saying that PK shootout, it was crazy. Like, so crazy. And so I think we were just, we always had faith in our girls and our team, but just going through all the different kinds of emotions. And when Serena scored that last PK, I think it was just a rush of all those emotions at once. And I mean, I was crying. Serena was crying. A lot of girls were crying just because of like all the hard work that we put into it and it finally happening. It was just a surreal moment. Well, she's not here, but what can you say? Um, let's go with you, Queen Lee, first. What can you say about the, de- the determination, the heart of Olivia during that shootout? Because she, she was just amazing back then. She honestly was. Like, not even just in the show. In, in every game that she played, um, she just eludes so much confidence. And, like, for me, that's really admiring and her confidence is so high that it just spreads out to the entire team so if you see her she didn't look scared not one bit she was confident she was doing her thing and so for that that just makes us more confident in her in the team and so I think that's just a great asset for her to bring to the team and she did that and she got the job done and it was just awesome how about you Serena what was she like during that time when she scored a goal and save the penalty before you took the kick? Yeah, no, she was, I mean, just to put it simply, she was a beast. <laughs> like, literally, beast. Like, like, for a goalie to make two saves, critical saves, and score a goal, like, when do you see that? Like, in, even in the top Premier League Champions League, when do you see that? And so for everyone, myself included, to witness that, it's like, She's a force to be reckoned with. And like Q said, like, she just exudes confidence. And when you have a keeper that, you know, you know, walks that walk, like, it makes me feel, like, more comfortable. Like, like even in stressful situations when the ball's getting in that area. And every time a ball would get shot on the goal, like, weirdly, I wasn't like, like, oh, my God. Like, oh my, I'd be like, no, she's got it. She's got it. So, like, it's just a calming like confidence thing that spreads throughout the team and truly when it starts when when the keeper can start that it just spreads throughout the whole team so yeah the, those pks like she was without a doubt the player of the match that game because she came up huge and like you know had she not scored that goal you know i wouldn't have been in the position that i was in to you know finish it off so props to live Let's go to your first game of the of the tournament against Thailand. Thailand has always beaten the Philippines before, but when you defeated them one 0 did that give you the confidence that yes, we can we can stay in this AFC Cup, we can go to the World Cup? Did that um, feeling come to your minds? 
Yeah, so again, a little background. Like, unfortunately, I wasn't able to play in that um, first game versus Thailand. But, you know, my sisters were able to, you know, get that win. Truly, that had nothing to do with me, like, in a sense of me physically being there. But I, I could see how much passion and pride and just just grit and, like, work, really that work hard uh, mentality that just, like, showed throughout that whole game because – we had never, we had never beaten them in the history of playing them like 12 times prior. And, you know, you know, that can be something that, you know, can be discouraging to certain teams and oh, all like, we've never won against them. I don't know how this game is going to go, but I think if anything that fueled us and having that game being the very first one, like that was the, for us, the most important game truly, because that was going to dictate whether we were, you know, you know, we were going to assume that Australia was going to come in first, um, very strong competitor. And so basically we were fighting for that second place spot. And had we not won that game, we would have been in the position of Thailand, quite frankly. So that, that was our World Cup game to me, in my eyes, that game right there. So um, winning that game set the tone. It set the tempo. So I'm really glad that, you know, the team was able to get that win because it just set us set us up for success and just going up throughout the tournament. What was it like playing against Thailand and finally defeating a country that the Philippines hasn't beaten in so many years? I was screaming my butt off at the TV when we got that win. I was, and, and even before that, when we got, when um, <laughs> Chad Daniel made that beautiful cross, to um, uh, Katrina, sorry, to Katrina and scored that beautiful volley ball into the goal before she was offside. And another opportunity by Katrina that hit the crossbar. Like, we had multiple opportunities. It easily could have been 3-0, but um, I was screaming, yelling, because a lot we had a lot of opportunities. And you could just tell that we really wanted it. And to, to, to beat that team and it just felt amazing. Like, oh my gosh, like we are here. We want to win. We believe in ourselves and we're showing it on day one. We're not, we're not showing it after the fact. We're starting right here, right now. So it was just so exciting. And I was just so proud, so proud of the girls. Cause like I said, I, I wasn't there. That, that had nothing to do with me. It had everything, everything to do with those girls that were there that game. And I just, I love the heck out of them. Like that was, that was a great game. Um, how about you, Queenie? What was the reaction like <laughs> on the pitch, getting the win, hearing the final whistle to defeat Thailand? I mean, Serena said it all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like she said, it was just that game that we that we won. It really projected us to like what we did. Um, it was a great start to our team. It gave us a lot of confidence. And you know, like you said, we haven't beaten Thailand before. And so knowing that information and just knowing if we did beat them, we would set ourselves in a good position to qualify for the World Cup. So finally beating them with the final whistle, it was just like, for me, it was just like a a sigh of relief, like a short sigh of relief, just because we're like, okay, we conquered that one hurdle. Now on to the next. Can you describe Chandler's goal? Because it was outside the box and it it was like one of those no, 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 yes moments because the goalie just, she caught the ball, but she slipped. What, what was the emotion like? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty weird. Like, I was kind of next to her when she was getting the ball, and at first it was like a scramble. I thought she got fouled. I think she, she thinks she got fouled because she was raising her hand. But there were just, like, defenders all around her, and then she ended up getting the shot off. And I remember just seeing it cross my face and I'm like kind of running to the goal to try and get like um, the rebound. And then I saw what the goalie was doing and I I, I feel like I kind of stopped and I was like, what's happening? And yeah, she kind of fumbled it. And luckily, yeah, I did see it past the line. So I'm raising my hand like it's a goal. And, you know, the goalie got it. And she's like, no, 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 it's not a goal. And then I'm like, all of us are screaming, it's a goal. It crossed the line. And so I'm looking at the ref like, you're going to call that a goal because it was a goal. And so when I saw her, like, point to the center spot, we were just all celebrating. We all celebrated in our huddle. 
and then it was great. Well, I want to talk about one opponent you guys faced. Well, Serena faced her during that match. You played against Sam Kerr. What was it like playing against a player of that caliber? Yeah, no, super talented. Um, you know, she's undoubtedly, you know, one of the top scorers in the world for a reason. And um, she just has a great knack for, you know, finding the goal, being in position, being goal scoring up because goal scoring opportunities like on the field and um you know not every player can do that and i think she does a great job of that so um you know it's just like a learning opportunity and even things that she's doing off the ball um are are lots of good things to take away from but um very talented player and even off the field very kind um taking pictures with some of the younger girls that um admired her that might really admire her off the field so all around, I, I really respect her as a player. And it was, it was cool to be able to play with someone that, you know, at such a high level and being able to, you know, somewhat compare myself and trying to find the marker of, you know, where I place um, playing against her. And, you know, as well as my other teammates as well, you know, they get to see the marker of where they're at. And, um, yeah, just I have a lot of respect for her. What growing up? What who was your footballing inspiration, and what's your favorite team? What's the team that you still support until now? I would say growing up, I definitely really looked up to Abby Wombat. Um, like Sam Kerr, she was just a really good, a really good header, just a really great goal scorer. Um, you know, she's she's Abby Wombat is the top scoring goal scorer men and women combined. So just you know kind of emulating myself, you know, after that, that type of person. And um, she's just a great leader all around on and off the field, even towards the end of her career when she wasn't playing so much, she was still leading for the, through the back um, from the bench. And, you know, some players don't do that. Some players, you know, kind of mope and, you know, go like, Oh, what was me? And like, you know, uh, especially with towards the end of her career, getting older, you know, things aren't working, your body's starting to break down, but, I really admire Abby Wombat because no matter what, she was still going to lead her team and, you know, be that voice, <laughs> be that person, that role model to still get her team where, she, where they needed to be, even if she wasn't physically on the field or physically being able to, you know, do the thing to do to get her team to the top. So um, I respect her, like, with the utmost respect on and off the field. So um, she's one of my top players that I really look up to um, growing up and as far as favorite soccer team I would just say I, I really enjoy watching uh, Liverpool um, play that's been our fam my family's team for I don't even know how long but um, another player that I, I really enjoy watching uh, Mohamed Salah, Salah. Uh, you know he was just playing in the um, AFCON against um, Senegal for Egypt. Um, unfortunately, they, they didn't get the win, but um, that guy can score goals too in, you know, in ways that are unimaginable. So just, you know, I really look up to those goal scorers that just have that, like, calmness on the ball because I think at times it's one of my weaknesses, like not being calm on the ball. So, um, you know, just kind of to learn from players that, like, you know, when they're getting pressure and stuff, they still find ways to finish finish those balls and make it look easy. Right. Um, how about you, Queen Lee? Same question. Who was your footballing inspiration and what's the team that you still support until now? Well, for the first question, same as Serena. <laughs> um, I really liked Abby Wambach growing up. Just how she carried herself on and off the field, like Serena said, just like she eludes confidence in what she does and she's like so sure of herself and I think for me when I was growing up I really admired how much confidence she had in herself and her team and everything so looking up to her and how she presented herself a public figure like that I really looked up to her and then team wise I don't necessarily have like a favorite team um I like watching different um, players play so I don't necessarily have like a favorite team but I'm 
invested in watching all the women's leagues play because I think it's really important to obviously we're in the women's game um learn from them and grow for them grow from them and like our our coach Allen um had us watching some of the men's games and I think that really helped us as well so I don't necessarily have a favorite team like I said but I enjoy watching all of it um one final question let's start with you Queen Lee um are you guys ready to bring the Philippine colors to the World Cup? Is that even a question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like 100, 1,000 percent, yes. Um, like just being in the Asian Cup and qualifying for the Philippines, like for us, we wanted to do that for the country and it brought us so much pride and we felt like it was our responsibility. But after we did qualify and like I said, seeing everyone's response to it, seeing how they're so proud of us and just their different reactions, how they're so excited. It like touched my heart just because seeing how many, how much support that we have from the Philippines. And so definitely, yes, we are ready to fight for the team, bring fight for the team, fight for the country and bring whatever we can to the world stage. How about you, Serena? Same question. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so honored to be in this position to, one, like, be a part of the team that got us there. And, you know, I hope to be a part of the team that gets, you know, is participating in the World Cup and just, like, make, make a lot of people proud and for people to, like, turn that TV on and be like, wow, like, we have a Philippine women's national team and... Like, wow, and not only, like, be like, oh, wow, we have a national team, but, wow, we're good. Like, we are, you know, a force to be reckoned with. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep continuing following this team. Like, I just hope that we make so many people proud, and I know we already have, um, but I'm, I'm just so excited. Um, you know, it's going to be challenging, but, you know, we're, we're ready for the challenge, and it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of determination, but, you know, you know, if, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And, you know, <laughs> um, they're not. And, we're, you know, we put a lot a lot of work. A lot of this, this, this just didn't happen overnight. Um, it took so many people, so many people before I was even on the team to get to this point. So um, I'm just hoping we can make everyone proud. All right, that is it. Um, thank you so much, Queen Lee. Thank you so much, Serena. Thank you for taking the time.